Langchain is the industry standard for building production ready LLM application and its power lies in how its major components are connected. It might seem complex at first but it's actually very beautiful and organized into five major stages. Let's break it down step by step and component by component. Every application starts with data. Input processing is the crucial first step where external information is prepared for the language model. First, you have raw text input. This could be PDFs you want to analyze, web pages you want to extract information, or any documentation file, any database dump, it can be any text source. But here is the problem. LLM cannot just understand the entire books. They have the token limits. And even if they do not have that, processing huge chunks of text is very inefficient and expensive. That's why the next step comes, document loaders. Document loaders are the data ingestion layers. Think of them as specialized importers for different file types. Langchain has different types of loader based on your input format like PDF loader, web-based loader, CSV or text loader. Each loader does something crucial. It converts your raw data into document objects which are small enough to be understood and processed accurately in the subsequent steps. A document object that has two parts. One is page content and metadata. Page content have the actual text while metadata stores information about the text like source, page number, data, etc. Why is this metadata such important? Because later, when you are retrieving information, you might want to filter by date or cite your sources or only such specific sections. Metadata makes all of that possible. Now, here is where it gets interesting. You have loaded your documents, but they are probably way too long. A 50 page PDF is one document, but you cannot feed that all at once to an LLM or meaningfully search it. So, text splitter break your documents into smaller, manageable chunks but not randomly, intelligently. Langchain offers several strategies like recursive character splitter, token-based splitter, semantic splitter. But what's the final goal? Each chunk should be very small enough to process efficiently by the large language models that contain meaningful context. And at the end of the input processing, you have a collection of document objects. Each one is a chunk with its content and metadata. These are now ready for the next stage. Once we have our documents, we need to give the AI a way to understand their meaning efficiently. This brings us to the embedding and storage step. Here, a fundamental question first. How do you make a text searchable by its meaning, not just by keywords? The answer is embedding. Embedding models take text and convert it into vectors, that is a list of numbers. You can think of them like numbers as coordinates in a multi-dimensional space where similar meanings are close to each other. For example, dog and puppy would have vectors close together, but dog and car would be far apart. Considering a statement, the cat sat on the mat and a feline rested on the rock would be surprisingly close. Popular embedding models like OpenAI Text Embedding 3 or Sentence Transformer or Cohere Embeddings are many more that are integrated with the Langton ecosystem. And each model creates vectors of various different dimensions. The typical range is like 768, 1024 or 1536 dimensions. More dimension means it can capture more nuance, but they can also take more storage and computations. Once your documents go through the embedding model, each chunks become dense, high dimensional arrays of number called vectors. You can think vector like a numerical fingerprint of the text meaning. Text with similar meaning will have vectors close to each other in this high dimensional space. But you are not done yet. You need to store these vectors somewhere you can search them efficiently. Vector stores are those specialized databases designed for vector search. They are optimized for finding similar vectors quickly even with millions of entries and rapid similarity searching making it for the long term memory system of our application. Popular vector stores like Langchain integrates with like Pinecone, Wavehead, Chroma, FISS or Azure Search and there are many more. But what happened behind the scene? When you add document to a vector store, it takes each document's text, generates embeddings using your embedding model, stores the vector along with the original text and metadata, and create indexes for first similarity search. When a user asks a question, we enter the retrieval phase. This is often the core of the retrieval augmented generation or RAG system. 
Everything in this test starts with the user query. Someone asks a question and that query need to be matched against your stored documents to find relevant information. But here is something crucial. You need to use the same embedding model for queries as used for the documents. Why? Because embeddings are only comparable within the same model. If you embedded your documents with OpenAI but try to search with query embeddings, you are comparing apple to orange. The query goes to the embedding model and becomes a vector just like your documents did. Now you have your query as a vector. Those are the numerical coordinates we talked about earlier. This query vector will be compared against the, all the document vectors in a vector store. Retrievers are the abstraction layer that makes such very simple. Instead of manually querying the vector store, you use a retriever. A retriever has only one jump. Given the query, return the relevant documents. They efficiently find the vectors and their associated text documents that are numerically closest, meaning the most relevant to the user's question. But how does it? There are various algorithms supported by LangChain. For example, similarity search retriever that returns the k most similar document based on the vector distance or MMR maximum marginal relevance that returns similar document but ensure diversity. Multi query retriever that generates multiple versions of query to catch documents that might be missed by a single query. There are many other like this like compression retriever, contextual compression retriever, self query retriever, many more. The retriever queries the vector store which performs similarity search. By calculating the distance between your query vector and every document vector and return the closest match. And the distance matrix, it can be calculated by cosine similarity or Euclidean distance or dot product. At the end of the retrieval, you have relevant documents. The chunks most likely to contain information needed to answer the query. This context is the precise information that the model need to answer the question, eliminating the risk of hallucination. The orchestration layer sits centrally, managing complexity and maintaining a state. This layer contains agents and memory. An agent is not just running a predefined workflow, it's making decisions about what to do next. Agents are the arguably the most sophisticated component in this whole loop. They are the control loop that decides what to do next. It can assess a user's request, decide if it needs to do retrieve information or it needs to use an external tool to solve the task. Let's see how a simple agent works. It let it receive a task or a question. It reason about what action to take and then choose which tool to use and execute the chosen action. Observe the result and repeat until the task is complete. This is called React Agent, Reasoning plus Action. There are various other types of agents including Self Reflection, Rays, LATS and many more. I have explained 6 most used agent architecture in this video. But what makes agents powerful? They can chain multiple tool calls together. They can recover from errors. They can ask for clarification. They adapt their strategy based on the results. Memory is essential for maintaining conversational history and context across multiple terms. The agent uses this memory to inform its decision and direct the flow of information between the retrieval system and the first generation system. Memory can be short term or long term. In short term, you find the effective way to store the conversation in the context window using methods like summary memory, buffer memory, window memory, etc. While in long term, you use database like vector store to store for longer duration. We are now ready to generate the final output where we go to the generation stage. This is where everything comes together to create the final response. Chat model at the heart of the generation process. These are the large language model specifically designed for the conversational AI. Popular models like GPT 5.1, Sonnet 4.5 or Gemini 3. Those are all supported by LangChain, even some open source free models as well. The relevant context from the retrieval and the instruction from the agents or memory are fed into the chat models. And it decides if it can answer directly or if it needs to perform an external action. This is where the tools come in. Tools allow the chat models to interface with an external system such as running calculation, executing code, searching the live web or even sending notification or emails. If a tool is used, the system receives two ledgers, which are fed back into the chat model for since. Finally, the model outputs the finished AI response back to the user.
This iterative process is what makes agents intelligent. Finally, after potentially multiple tool calls and the reasoning steps, the chat model generates the final AI response. That's the entire architecture. So from raw text input to vector stores through the search and retrieval process, managed by agents and memory, and finally synthesized by chat models. That is the complete sequential journey of how Langchain components connect to power complete AI applications. The beauty of Langchain is this structured interconnected flow. Input become vectors which are searched in retrieval, managed by agents and memory, and synthesized by chat models into AI response. And here are all the key components with their main functionality supported by use case. Because understanding these components is the key to mastering any of the modern AI application development. If this was helpful, smash the like button and subscribe for more such tutorial and drop the comment if you have any questions or want to see any specific topics covered. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Till then, keep learning, keep coding and keep growing.